and he tries to correlate uh, him, uh, different aspects of Himalayan orogeny with, from metamorphism, deformation, and exhumation of deep seated rocks. He used uh, several proxies to do that, and I think he will be discussing some, some of them this, in his talk. Uh, he, he is basically from Shipshagar, Assam. Uh, he did his BSc there, and after that, he did his MSc from Dibrugo University. For his uh, doctoral research, he joined Wadia Institute of Himalayan Geology and obtained his doctoral degree from Banaras Hindu University. And uh, currently, he is assistant professor of Assam University, which is located at Silchar. Uh, and he is uh, he's really active worker. He is currently working in Arunachal Himalaya. Uh, he said a couple of minutes before. And uh, we'll be hearing him soon. And now the dice is uh, completely yours, Purbojati. You can go ahead. Welcome, Purbojati. You can share your slide. Can you hear me, Purbojati? Hello. Purva Jyoti, are you there? Yes, sir. I got disconnected. Okay. Yeah. No, so it is yeah. fine. Yeah. Yeah, I am here. So, so dice is yours now. You can share your slides and start your talk. Okay. So am I audible? Yeah, perfect. <clears throat> okay. Could you share your slides? Yes, it's coming. Oh. Yes. Is it visible to everyone? Yeah, it's perfect, I think. Yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good evening. Yeah. Uh, good evening, all. Uh, thank you uh, for inviting me. You are not audible. I feel sometimes okay. Yeah. Sir, I am joining again. Just a minute. Okay. Sure. Sure. <clears throat> am I audible, sir? Yeah. Perfect. Is it visible? Yes. Go ahead. <clears throat> so, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you uh, for introducing me, and uh, thank you for inviting me for this uh, le uh, lecture series. Uh, I feel honored and privileged to be a part of this AGE lecture series. Uh, today, I am going to talk about myelonites and migmatites and their changes in chemical mass and compositions in response to myelonitization and migmatization. So <clears throat> the myelonites, as we all know, these are products of ductile shear zone and uh, they provide uh, excellent conduits for uh, movement of fluids, which in turn triggers fluid rock interactions, which eventually changes change the composition of myelonites. In case of migmatites, uh, uh, the chemical fractionation during partial melting of continental rocks may lead uh, the change in uh, chemical mass in the migmatites also. So today I will focus on how the chemical mass 
can be changed with uh, deformation and metamorphism. Okay, so as we know, the shear zones are uh, zones of high strain accumulation, and uh, these are very uh, excellent natural laboratories where we can study the element mobilities and the associated uh, chemical volume and mass changes. So, as I already mentioned, the rocks which are present in the shear zones, they provide excellent conduits for uh, fluid movement and uh, they will uh, proceed to the fluid rock interactions, which eventually change the composition of, uh, not composition, the chemical uh, mass transfer of the rocks. So, we all know the PT conditions of myelonites and uh, migmatites can uh, uh, control the stability of mineral assemblages as well as the enrichment or depletion of major and trace elements in the drugs. So in this particular study, we will uh, aid the understanding on how the uh, stability of mineral assemblages and depletion of and enrichment of major and trace elements can be related with the deformation as well as metamorphic PT conditions. So we, uh, I took the uh, uh, means shear zones of uh, main central shear zone, which is basically a very uh, large intracontinental shear zone, and uh, this uh, MCT plays important role during the evolution of Himalayan orogeny. So this is the map of Himalaya. So and uh, this is the map of Arunachal Himalaya. I will concentrate uh, on the western parts of part of the Arunachal Himalaya. So this black box representing some parts of Bombilla and Dirang formation and uh, some part of uh, Gambalan sequence that is Sela group of rocks also it will it covers the MCT. So this Dirang uh, formation rocks and this Bombilla they are basically representing uh, lesser Himalayan crystalline sequence. So this is the detailed geological map of uh, my study area. So this is the transect from Bumdila to Tawang. If you go further northwest, then we will reach Tawang. So <coughs> we have taken several, uh, we have done intensive field work along this section and uh, collected various data and samples for further study. We marked the Dirang Trust in this particular region, uh, region based on several field evidences. So like uh, appearance of garnet in the uh, metapalitic rocks and also the intensely deformed rock. Uh, based on those evidences, we mark this uh, Dirang thrust at this particular position. And we, when we go further towards northwest, then we will find the intensity of deformation in the Dirang formation will uh, reduces. And uh, when we approach the MCT, then the intensity of deformation again uh, um, triggered and they are intensely defi deformed. So, so we have collected uh, samples from uh, different structural positions of uh, Dirang formation. So based on the field observations, we divide the Dirang formation into three different units. Like the, uh, the lower one, the, which is located just uh, immediate hemi hanging wall of the Dirang thrust. This is the lower myelonate zone. And the central portion is the proto myelonate zone. And uh, the immediate foot wall of the MCT, this is the upper myelonate zone. So we have collected samples from upper zone as well as from the lower my, uh, proto myelonate zone to, to see the metamorphic changes and the, uh, and the uh, chemical mass changes in response to deformation along the MCT, main central thrust zone. So in the previous study, the previous liter, the entities marked uh, in this particular area, but they didn't provide proper definition of MCT based on field observation. So, but we tried to uh, uh, demarcate the MCT based on field observations. Like when we reached the area Rama camp in this particular section, then we found appearance of uh, migmatites and uh, also deformation in the migmatite leucosomes and mel melanos paleosomes they are deformed and they show different types of folding so based based on that deformation and appearance of uh, migmatites and also the uh, metamorphic gradient we identified the mct during field investigation that those signatures are very prominent up till 500 meters from this domain so we mark the, the mct as a mct zone it is not a single thrust plane it is a mct zone so this particular 
particular domain, we have uh, divided this particular domain for our convenience as the lesser, lower structural position of the MCT zone and the upper structural position of the MCT zone. So we have collected samples from lower structural position as well as upper structural position of the MCT zone for our further study. So this is the geological cross section we have prepared. So as we, as I already uh, described, this is the Dirang Trust and this is the MCT. And uh, I have marked the upper myelinate zone and the proto myelinate zone and the lower myelinate zone. And these uh, divisions are based on entirely based on field observation. So uh, the, this uh, red colored uh, uh, it starts basically representing sample locations. Now come to observations this particular field photograph is from the immediate hanging wall or you can say from the drain trust zone and uh, this is basically little ductile shear zone and this second photograph basically represent uh, is from the immediate uh, immediate uh, foot wall of the mct that uh, is garnet bearing metapalletic rock this is, these are myelonitis myelonitic rocks so we have prepared thin sections uh, from collected samples from this myelinetic upper myelinetic domain. So we found that the the, the foliations are st strongly developed and they are developed by quartz, white mica, biotite, and plagioclase. And uh, we can see some uh, snow wool garnets. It has inclusions of uh, uh, plagioclase, quartz, and white mica, and they are form forming the internal foliation. The these garnet basically is showing the same kinematic relationship with the uh, matrix foliation. In the interfolial domain, we have marked different rich and textures uh, of in quartz grains. Okay, so like the green boundary migration, the these green boundary migrations are very prominent in this particular domain so based on those observations we assigned that deformation temperature at least 500 degree can be there can be can be there for this particular uh, uh, myelinetic domain so and uh, now come to the proto myelinic zone so this is basically central part of the derang formation so we have prepared a thin section you can see here so this the major foliations are really marked by white and uh, uh, white mica and the biotite and the interfolial domains are basically marked by quartz and plagioclase they are elongated parallel to the main foliation we can see the um, um, the uh, bulging green boundaries in the quartz greens then you can uh, then based on the uh, these uh, observations uh, by following the steep uh, 2000 steep 2002 uh, deformation temperature scale then we can assign the deformation temperature for photomyelinetic rocks is about 290 and uh, in between 390 degree celsius okay now come to the uh, field observations uh, and microstructures for, for the MCT zone. This part, so the first photograph basically representing the lower structural position of the lower structural position of the MCT zone. Here you can see these are these are my uh, migmatites. You can see the leucosomes and uh, the ringed matrix cell are deformed and they are showing shear related fold verging towards southwest. So I have prepared in sections from leucosomes and the matrix cell. So you can see the the leucosomes are really uh, composed of K-Felspar, plesioclase, and we I marked some malfilms in the leucosome. And in the mephic selvage domain, I can see the uh, malfilm also, and also this is the garnet, uh, where where we uh, I got this garnet from in, in the mephic selvage domain. So this particular photomicrograph, basically, they, this is representing the paleosome in this particular domain, uh, structural position. Here you can see the uh, main foliations are mainly marked by white mica and the biotite, and you can see the the boundary of the uh, white mica they are corroded, and there they looks like they involve in the metamorphic reactions to produce the uh, leucosomes. So we yes, we interpret that the white mica were uh, uh, involved in the metamorphic reaction as a reactant to produce the uh, leucosomes that is uh, melt. And this particular uh, figure uh, for field photographs, it is from the uh, parastaxial position. The, here you can see parallel alignment of turmaline bearing uh, leucosomes. And uh, here I have prepared the thin sections uh, of the leucosomes. Here you can see the films and the other uh, minerals like plesioclase, biotite, and quartz. And here the siliminate is appear in the upper structural position. So appearance of siliminate can also mark in the MCT, MCT zone. The in the paleosome uh, uh, domain, we have marked the parallel alignment of biotite and white mica, and the interfolial domains are mainly marked by plesioclase and the quartz. 
okay so do the uh, till the till this part, uh, slide i have described the field observations and microstructure now come to the main uh, tool which i use for myelonites and the migmatite to check the element mobility and chemical mass transfer so this is a mass balance calculation tool this is a very useful tool to uh, quantify the mass gain or loss of mass in the altered rock and also to check the volume and uh, of the mass transfer so the altered rock uh, the, the rock could be altered by different geological processes like residual metamorphism content contact metamorphism or deposit formation shear zone development migmatite formation and hydrothermal alteration or all the in all cases or in all geological processes we can utilize we can employ this mass balance calculation tool to quantify the uh, mass transfer so now come to the working principle how it works uh, basically uh, we have to know uh, two composition bulk composition of two rock types one is altered rock types and another is the uh, unaltered rock type rock type and that this altered and unaltered rock types they should be genetically related it means that the altered rock type should have the unaltered the composition of the unaltered rock, uh, should be the should represent the protolith of the altered sample so this is the basic consideration in the uh, chemical mass balance uh, tool so there are some prerequisites like the altered sample must have had the same initial chemical composition as compared to the unaltered uh, in the initial rock so we have to know the composition of the unaltered rock but it should represent the initial composition of the altered rock and uh, to employ uh this uh, mass balance calculation tool we have to know the we have to identify the immobile elements who is mobile mobile element is immobile because mobile we cannot take the mobile element for uh, mass, uh, to identify the chemical mobility but we have to identify the immobile elements and uh, the identification of immobile elements is very important in case of uh, mass balance calculation tool so there are various methods uh, for mass balance calculation uh, geometrical methods as well as statistical method uh, i use uh, this isocon method uh, it was proposed by grant uh, 1986 and uh, he used the equation of gresens 1967 this is the equation uh, proposed by the gresens 1967 basically this equation represents the relationship between the composition of altered rock as well as uh, with the unaltered rock but this equation is uh, for all uh, elements it could be mobile or it could be immobile but but grant basically recognized rearrange this equation by considering the assumptions on the immobile elements like immobile elements Uh, remain unchanged even after any deformation processes their concentration remain unchanged so considering that assumption the grant 1986 rearranged this equation and he proposed this particular equation here he ignored this particular parameter this parameter basically represents the change in the composition of the component z z this z z component is he is considering the immobile element so this is the isocon equation and uh, this equation is uh, basically based on the uh, presence of immobile element and this equation is treated as the basis for the quantification of the mobility of the mobile element in the altered rock okay so you can check this diagram uh, x y diagram so uh, in the y axis uh, we we can plot the composition of any element uh, of the in the all of the altered sample and uh, in other in the y x axis we can plot the composition of the any any element in the of the protolith okay so <clears throat> first we have to define the isocon we have to de define the uh, mark the isocon line by using the immobile element concentration so here i am i am considering the i is the immobile element and based on distribution of the i i am plotting this particular uh, line this is the isocon line for this particular altered rock okay so here here uh, mp mp by mm this is basically uh, the slope in representing the slope of the isocon this particular parameter mp by mm is particularly representing the slope of the isocon so <coughs> here we can see the slope of the isocon is 1.25 uh, uh, 25 so we 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 can see that the altered rock has gained mass of at least 20% chemical mass uh, during the alteration processes 
and uh, if I consider two uh, composition like X and Y, then if it is plot, it is plot plotting above the isocon line, then it means that the X has gained it, its ma mass, not mass, X has gained its concentration in the altered drug during the alteration processes. If the, if the Y is plotting below the uh, isocon line, it means that the uh, concentration of Y uh, has uh, lost their uh, concentration uh, in the altered drug during the alteration processes. This is the basic principle which I employed in the myelinetic rocks. So there are some equations also. So you to, to check the volume changes and to check the enrichment or depletion of the mobile elements. Okay, so there are some elements like alkali, like sodium, potassium, rubidium, and some alkaline earth elements like calcium, magnesium, estroncium. They are very susceptible to the progate metamorphism. So by studying the metamorphism, we can check the mass transfer of this of these particular elements. So it is very important, and also and also to uh, this mass transfer during the post progate metamorphism or during the metamorphism can uh, stable different index minerals like garnet sterolite kyanite and silimanite so the study studying the mass transfer in a Barovian sequence terrain we can uh, we can we can deduce the uh, 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 reason uh, that control the stability of different index minerals like garnet sterolite kyanite and silimanite Okay. And uh, also, if we see the uh, loss or gain systematics of potassium, sodium, calcium, and silica, then we can we can brief about the breakdown of different micas. It could be white mica or it could be uh, biotite. Okay. So by studying this, their concentration, we can also uh, see how what kind of minerals have broke down. And also, uh, if you consider that sodium and calcium mass transfer, then it will largely controlled by the, since it is largely controlled by the plagic Lewis, if you uh, then by the studying this NSCA mass transfer, then we can easily able to uh, the determine the fraction and behavior of the plagioclase in the myelonitic as well as the pigmatitic rocks. Now, uh, I'm going to uh, apply this mass balance calculation in the myelonites. As I already mentioned that, uh, I have divided the Dirang formation into different, year, diff different units. The lower one is the uh, lower myelinate unit, uh, the middle one is the proto myelinate zone unit, and the upper one is the upper myelinate zone unit. Okay. So, in case of meta sedimentary sequence, who say, which are even deformed up to proto myelinatic and the myelinatic stage, in that case, consideration of precursors of the myelinatic rocks is very challenging. It is not possible to pick up directly one precursor rock sample to calculate the mass balance. So in that case, we have to see, is there any proto magnetic rock as, uh, are associated with that particular magnetic rock? Because here we can see that in the whole uh, uh, stretch for, uh, in the Dirang formation, you can see the mineralogy is almost similar. But their model percentage is different, but mineralogy is almost similar. It means that though all those rocks are genetically related, but they are deformed up to a certain extent. So we took the protomyelinate rock as a precursor of mineralogy of the upper myelinatic rock. So such considerations are also taken in the previous study also. In Sikkim Himalaya recently, one paper was published in this particular uh, consideration. And also there are few papers uh, where they uh, considered the protomyelonitic rock as the precursor mineralogy of the myelonitic rock. So <clears throat> when we plot the myelinitic uh, sample A, this is myelinitic metapellite in the y, y axis and the protomyelinitic rock in the x, then we found we then we found two isocon. Now, why we are finding two isocon? Uh, as we know, uh, the in the metasedimentary rocks, uh, generally, even after deformation, the two mineral two elements like L AL and TI, these are treated as the immobile element. And uh, in the metasedimentary rocks, that's why we have found two isocon. One is speed L uh, isocon, and another one is uh, TY TI best fit isocon. So we have two isocon in this particular calculation. And here we are finding 0 0.70. This is the slope of this isocon. Then it means that the myelinatic rock has gained 
has gained at least 30% chemical mass if we compare with the protomyelinatic row. So, but in case of TI, it is like, it's likely 43% is chemical mass gained of myelinatic row uh, when we compare with the protomyelinatic row. So, but but the after all the interpretation is that on an average like 35% around mass, chemical mass have been gained by the myelinatic rock from the, when it uh, transformed from the protomyelinate to myelinate, myelinate. And in other elements like silica, potassium and sodium, they are all enriched. They are all enriched as compared to the other elements, iron, manganese, Ca, P, M and D, they are depleted in the, in the myelinatic rock. Okay, so this is a summary. You can we can see the silica on an average ninety four percent increase in the myelinatic rock, and the CA is increased thirty one percent. Is K is increased seventeen percent. Is and other depleted twenty eight percent depleted of Fe. Seventy four percent is depletion of Mn. For sixty six percent is depletion of Mg. Forty nine percent is depletion of CA. So these are depleted element. And also we can see the volume changes on an average of 55% volume change in the myelinatic row. So now, now we have to we, we now we are uh, dealing with the mineralogical changes between the protomyelinate zone and to the and the upper myelinate zone. We have calculated the model percentage of each studied sample by using point counting method. Here we can see the logs of the upper myelinate zone, uh, the uh, basically enrich in quartz model percentage and the white white mica model percentage biotite and garnet okay but in case of uh, ultra, uh, upper uh, myelinate zone the plesioclase is decreased the model percentage of plesioclase is decreased so increase in model percentage of micas and quartz and significant reduction of model amounts and also size so we we can we can assign one very common metamorphic reaction for this particular uh, myelinatic row so this, this is the very common metamorphic reaction. Okay. So <clears throat> this metamorphic reaction can also be supported by the element mobility like silica, sodium and potassium in the upper myelinate zone. As I already described that uh, in my previous slide that uh, the myelinatic rock is characterized by enrichment of silica, sodium and potassium. So this metamorphic reaction can, can, uh, explain, can be supported by this particular distribution pattern. Also, we can see the alert and garnet prefer blast and a progressive increase in their model percentage with the increasing structural distance. So, garnet model percentage is also increasing. Also, their size is enlarged. So, this could be explained by this particular uh, distribution pattern of calcium, magnesium, iron, and manganese. These are n member composition of garnet. So, we, these are depleted in the myelinatic rock. Okay, this means that the when the uh, 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 garnet forming process is going on, then those garnet uh, take up all the uh, means uh, maximum calcium, magnesium, and iron M and Mg from the bulk from the matrix to accumulate in their uh, in their cell site to develop the garnet. So this enlar enlargement of garnet and progressive increment of their model percentage can be can also be uh, explained by this particular elemental distribution as i mentioned already that the rock uh, myelinatic rock has deformation temperature of 500 degrees celsius so we interpret that the these metamorphic reactions and this element mobilities were uh, can be associated with the deformation temperature of about 500 degrees celsius so <clears throat> Since model increase of micas and significant reduction of model amounts of plesioclase, these are basically related with the prograde metamorphic conditions or metamorphic metamorphic conditions. It cannot they these uh, distributions pattern cannot be related with the uh, retrograde metamorphic condition. Now we have to check: uh, can we uh, able to identify the prograde metamorphic? Uh, PT conditions or peak, peak metamorphic PT condition. If we can identify the peak or pocket metamorphic condition, then we can assign that the elemental distributions can be correlated with the uh, those pressure temperature conditions. Now, come to the PT estimation of the sample A. This is the uh, myelinatic pelletic cyst, by garnet bearing myelinatic pelletic, pelletic rock. So, uh, I have calculated, uh, I have estimated this pressure temperature by using PT pseudo section modeling. Uh, via uh, via uh, Parflex software, so <coughs> the LOI is taking uh, the uh, H2O content uh, for the calculation. 
and uh, i have used uh, thermodynamic data set internally consistent thermodynamic data sets of hollen and powell for the calculation and i uh, uh, a various ax uh, model for defining mineralogy so though there is no maltis present in our sample in this sample a8 we i uh, uh, consider the uh, melt ax model to to check where the uh, solidus lies in our uh, studied samples in our studied systems okay so when after the calculation i have found this uh, different pt fields so this pt field is very much uh, consistent with the observed petrographical evidences so but this is a very large pt field so we cannot specifically define the pressure temperature condition to check the to specify the pressure temperature condition i uh, scanned the garnet profile uh, from rim to rim so this is the garnet composition profile here here you can see this ca xca xmn xmg and xfe and uh, here, here you can see the ca is basically decreased at the, at the rim portion and the f is uh, increase in the rim portion so this particular distribution of ca representing the uh, decompression drive driven net transfer uh, reaction retrograde reaction so we when we contoured the pseudo section by using the uh, isoplate uh, garnet isoplate then we found that the garnet core composition basically intersecting this particular uh, circle the first circle and the rim composition uh, they are intersecting in the circle so this particular circle this is basically representing the peak metamorphic condition that is given by the 0.68 to 0.73 gigapascal and temperature is about 6 celsius so obtain from the section so it means that the lesser himalayan sequence are buried up to approximately 25 km depth by the geta himalayan sequence so since as i already mentioned that if we can calculate the if we can estimate the pressure temperature whether it is progate or peak pressure then we can assign the uh, pressure temperature condition for the element mobility that we observe in the mylonite ground so we observe that this is the pressure temperature condition the, uh, uh, in the mylonite ground due to uh, at the, at this particular pt condition the mobility uh, or chemical mass transfer were recorded in the mylonite ground okay now i i will imply this mass balance calculation for the migmatites so in the migmatites we have uh, identified the leucosomes mafic salvage and paleosomes this is the leucosomes are generally ringed by the mafic salvage and uh, the paleosome where we uh, we use this term is not true paleosome we in anatomic system we cannot find true paleosome the pale the word used in this Body uh, application. So we took the composition of the glucosome and the mafic salvage to compare the composition of the paleosome in this mass balance calculation. So when we compare, then we found that there are the T I and A L. They are best fit isocon. We we are not getting two isocon for T I and A L separately, but we got only one. Uh, isocon best fit isocon in between ti and al here we can see the enrichment of ca na potassium and silica uh, in the um, silicosome and mafic salvage and the depletion of ma magnesium iron in the uh, mafic salvage this particular distribution is from lower stack cell position of the mct and uh, this particular diagram it is representing the samples of the leucosome and paleosome and the uh, uh, leucosome and uh, not paleosome leucosome mafic salvage it should be mafic salvage so it is the paleosome so this particular uh, samples this particular samples are from the upper structural level of the mct zone so you can see that the enrichment of silica and pot uh, potassium here and also you can see the depletion of calcium magnesium sodium and iron in this in the leucosome and paleosomes so <clears throat> this is the summary of the, the loss or gain in the migmatites uh, you can see we can, we can the silica is uh, uh, has gained the silica has gained its concentration in the leucosome and mafic salvage domains and uh, potassium uh, has gained its uh, concentration in the mafic salvage and leucosome domain and in in the in other sample that is from lower stack cell level you can see the silica has gained about 20% and uh, uh, cao and it, it it has got uh, by 140 and is about 
both 14 always in the uh, lower structural position. So enrichment and uh, enrichment of the silica and potassium and uh, depletion of magnesium, sodium, and iron. Basically, they these elemental distribution basically represents the involvement of the biotite and plagioclase in the formation of leucosome and also local male derivative in the magma. And uh, <coughs> we observed that magmatites are characterized by progressive increase in the mobility of CA. Mg, Na, Fe, and phosphorus, which con with continuous gain in chemical mass from the lower structural position to the upper structural position of the density. And uh, we uh, and uh, we can see the in the leucosome metric salvage domains we have high Na by Ca and high Ka by Na ratios. These basically they these are a representative of involvement of the uh, melt in the magmatic domain. So as we uh, we note that. All these element distributions are related to the partial melting condition and also but not partial melting condition formation of leucosomes. So if we can uh, determine the pressure temperature conditions uh, at which the partial melt were generated, then we can uh, assign a particular pressure temperature condition for this element mobility. For this region, we have the pseudo section for uh, sample A3, it is from the lower structural position. So, <coughs> We first we 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 uh, scan the garnet we we observe, which we observed. Then we found that this 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 garnet basically is strongly zone garnet. We can see very prominent core, mantle, and rim composition in the garnet. So you can see the the CA the CA composition of the garnet it is decreased towards the rim, and the MN is also decreasing towards the rim. But in case of MZ and FE, they are increasing towards the rim. So this particular uh, compositional uh, changes basically represents the uh, prograde growth zoning. Okay. So <clears throat> since th these garnets are very, uh, uh, these are well zone garnet, then the only, uh, then we have to do, we have to calculate two uh, bulk rock comp composition. One is fractionated bulk rock composition. Another one is the unfractionated bulk rock comp composition. If we calculate the pseudo section by using the unfractionated bulk composition, then we can assign the pitch pressure temperature for the open system behavior. Since since uh, magmatite is an open system rock, so we can get the open system calculation by using the unfractionated bulk rock composition. But if we uh, calculate a series section by using the fractionated bulk rock composition, then we can able to uh, 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 calculate the um, closed system behavior of the sample. So, so uh, first I calculate the uh, pseudo section by using the unfractionated bulk rock composition. So here we can uh, here, I have used the LOI as the H2O content for the calculation. This LOI, uh, I, I have generated, I have determined this LOI by using XRF for the, for the same sample. So when I calculated this pseudo section by using unfractionated bulk rock composition, then I found few PT, field, PT fields which are very similar to our uh, petrography. So this particular P field and this particular PT, PT field are very similar to our uh, observed petrography, but but we have to determine which one is which one is the proper PT field for the unfractionated bulk rock composition. So we controlled the pseudo section with the isoplate garnet isoplate. Then we found that the core composition of the garnet isoplate intersecting at this particular uh, position that is a below uh, at this particular PT field. So this is the PT that there is giving by the uh, core composition. That that is the PT is uh, PT is four to zero point seven in a round. So this particular PT basically um, PT is representing the progate metamorphic conditions for the particular sample. Okay, we have not we have not figured out the pressure temperature condition for the appearance of the partial melt. In the next zero section, we have tell, we have used the fractionated bulk rock composition. Here, the H2 content is not taken into account from the LOI. We have to calculate this H2 content by TX H2O zero section modeling. By using that TX H2O zero section modeling, I I have estimated the uh, water content of 0 0.03 mole percentage. So, 
So by using this water content, uh, I have calculated pseudo section. Then we found when I control the pseudo section with the garnet isoplate of the ring composition, then we found this. This is the peak uh, pressure temperature condition. That is a 0.8 to 0.90 gigapascal, and the temperature is about 680 degrees Celsius to 710 degrees Celsius. This is the pressure temperature condition, and this pressure temperature condition basically lying above the solitas. It means that this pressure temperature condition gives the uh, pressure uh, uh, metamorphic condition at which the pressure uh, parcel melt was occurred in the sample. So this is the, we assign this pressure and temperature condition for those element mobility and chemical mass transfer in the leucosome and mafic salvage domains of the lower structural position of MCT zone. Now come to the <coughs> PT estimation of the sample A9. It is basically from the upper structural position. So we use the Balrog composition for this calculation because we simply use Balrog composition because in this particular garnet composition, we didn't find any growth zoning or any zone garnet. Okay, so all these are homogenized. So we we interpret that this this is basically diffuse, diffusive homogenization of the uh, end member elements will uh, lead the homogeneous garnet composition. Okay, so we didn't we didn't uh, uh, calculate the fractionated bulk composition. We just use the measured bulk composition for the zero session modeling. Finally, by using the garnet isoplate compo compositional isoplate, then the, uh, we deduce that pressure temperature of 0 0.52 to 0 0.60 gigapascal and the temperature of about 680 degrees Celsius to 720 degrees Celsius. This is the PT condition at which the element mobility and the chemical mass transfer were uh, occurred in the upper structural position, especially in the leucosome and mafic salvage domain. So here we 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 based on petrography we observed that appearance of preliminary in the sample and also in the zero section we we observed that appearance of the zero section so not zero section preliminary appearance of the preliminary so this particular appearance basically gives the idea of this metamorphic uh, reaction when white mica reacts with plagioclase plus quartz plus H2O then it will give the aluminosilicate and the liquid this metamorphic reaction can be assigned for this particular PT condition. So here I am uh, comparing uh, the previous the published data along that section with my data. If these these divisions are actually I made these divisions based on my, uh, for my convenience to study, and uh, I found that the peak metamorphic conditions they are drastically changed across the MCT, and uh, this means that the uh, the beta hemolyzed sequence they are amplified above the lesser hemolyzed sequence in a um, the huge volume of getter hemolyzed sequence are amplified over the lesser hemolyzed sequence, and the lesser hemolyzed sequence are buried up till depth of 25 km. So, based on this study, uh, I have concluded some remarks like the MCT is delineated based on lithological variation and isothermal increase of the pressure gradient from 0.68 to 0.70 gigapascal to 0.88 to 0.93 gigapascal. And the uh, upper myelinate zone of the Dirang formation has experienced chemical mass transfer, most likely associated with the emplacement of the getter hemolyzed sequence along the MCT. The deform deformation lead to enrichment of sodium, potassium, silica, and depletion of manganese, magnesium, and calcium, and iron, and phosphorus in the upper myelinate zone with the gain in mass of 55% with respect to the proto myelinate zone. These chemical changes are accompanied with peak metamorphic conditions of 0.62 to 0.66 gigapascal and the temperature is about 690 degrees Celsius to 710 degrees Celsius in the upper mainland zone. And also I have uh, made some remarks like migmatites of lesser hema lower structural position of the MCT zone are characterized by enrichment of silica, sodium, potassium, calcium, manganese and phosphorus and the depletion of magnesium and iron in the leucosome in the end, mafic cell base ready to the paleosome with the 30% chemical mass gain. Major element distribution is, uh, suggests that participation of biotite and plesioclase in the leucosome formation and local derivation of melt in the magmatite. The magnetite of upper structural position of the MCD zone is characterized by enrichment of SI, MN, and K and depletion of CA, uh, manganese. Uh, sodium, phosphorus, and iron in the leucosome and mafic cell base related to the paleosome with the 70% gain in chemical mass. And these chemical changes occur during the peak to near peak metamorphic conditions of 0 to 
थैंक यू Thank, thank you, sir. You. Thank you, Purvo Jate. Thank you, Purvo Jate. So you have walked uh, a lot along this area. So I think there will be uh, a few quick queries from the audience. Uh, now the session is open. Abhinavada is there. Yeah. I think you uh, want to. Uh, say something right yeah uh, i think the yeah. old man uh, once again this old man i was expecting people to come up first now what you can start <laughs> that okay uh, dr kokan i uh, honestly i uh, watched your presentation excellent uh, but question is you know gentleman that i am little bit confused of your terminology is being used You see, myelinites, migmatites, metamorphic rock, open system, closed systems. Find it. The moment you say it's open system, you should go to the metamorphism. These days, not all mm. metamorphism interpreted as the power. You have done the pseudo sections. You have to see. You see, I have already seen. So on, there is mass changes. There are a lot of additions. You go to the Kornitsky to the present day Hakon Westen works and put me some other work. the metasome medicine because of the and secondly if this is migmatite then there is a partial melting there should be a melt products which is different from a metamorphic product they may be occurring side by side what are the peritectic minerals that is not so i was more interested to see more of your photomicrograph or field photograph secondly the myelonites and migma myelonites migmatite and metamorphic rock all together they may be occurring in the same space but their timing is same formation because migmatite formation and myelonite mm. formation simultaneously is a difficult thing because of the strain that's the point uh, i think and secondly the white mica is all this thing here the mineralogy also you have shown it's a sequential changes of the minerals grow so you have to correlate which has really developed during migmatization which has developed during myelonization which has developed during metamorphism that's the point so because if you say this is the myelonite form of a high grade that is a pasteur classification or medium grade or the low grade that classification is very much needed other is all jumbled up in this <coughs> the pseudo section is like to make it i know this is pseudo section but question is what is the reaction textures what are the that should be demonstrated with the photomicrograph yes this is the reaction and i have used this thermobarometry for calculating these pseudo sections so my point is gentlemen very well uh, presentation but myelonitization migmatization metamorphism and metasomatism you have to distinguish separately the moment you say the open system you must give a thought over it thank you okay okay sir thank you sir i will look into this matter and obviously i will uh, imply all those your suggestions in my future research thank you sir thank you for your suggestion Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you want to say something uh, to his queries? No, sir. I accept all those things. I will. I will try to incorporate. And uh, obviously, I know something uh, that he pointed out. Mm. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Because your talk is largely from metamorphic petrology. Yeah. Uh, so I think. Uh, I mean, uh, there are there are people here who are working with petrology. Uh, Dr. Kupan, I want to add up. You know, I am going to challenge my own work, which I interpreted. Okay. For example, some sillimanite in some beds, which I interpreted earlier as a metamorphic product. Now okay. they are all confined within ductile shear zone. I am interpreting them. They are okay. all metasomatic product. So we can always revise our own ideas with the new findings. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. 
Any more query? Hello. If not, then I'll ask uh, Professor Mondal. He's there. Tell me something. Uh, no, I have nothing to comment on Purvajati's work. Uh, actually, this deliberation reminds me the great work by John Ramsey and Mohanty, uh, mm. who calculated the volume loss, uh, not only from geochemistry, but also supported with parallel estimates from structural, you know, calculations. Yeah. Right. Uh, but Purvajati, I have a sincere message because when you are making a system open, then its thermodynamic calculations turn out to be extremely complex. So I am not sure that when you are going to employ equilibrium thermodynamics, because you are taking into account advection term, which are not accounted for in thermodynamic equations. So you are uh, uh, utilizing that, you know, perplex, the pseudo sections. I think those pseudo sections have been framed based on equilibrium thermodynamics, right? Yes, yes, sir. So, if that is the case, then how can you bring in that scenario in an open system when material wise the system always remains in an equilibrium conditions? Mm -hmm. So these are the things, you know, you have to be more careful because you know better than me uh, because you are a person from metamorphic petrology, so you deal with thermodynamics, but so far mm -hmm. petrology is <clears throat> thermodynamics that are entirely based on equilibrium thermodynamics. Okay? Okay. So you, 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 you can think of this. Yeah, yeah. Sure, sir. Sure. Thank you. Thank right. you for your suggestion, sir. And the other thing, when you are taking a marriage between metamorphic Technology and structural geology, like Professor Jan, John Ramsey, you, you should also have good amount of support from structural calculations. Okay. Like he calculated the volume loss, uh, in, in, in his case it was, he actually showed volume loss can go up to 70 to 72 percent. And he also chose titanium, nickel, these are the immobile elements. So based on their concentration, he calculated the volume loss. And he also calculated volume loss from the structural evidences, and he showed a very nice correlation between the two. So when you are trying to propose the same kind of idea, it would be nice to see also from support, uh, some support from structural uh, proxies that would strengthen your evidence, right? Yeah. Okay. But otherwise, sure. you have nicely framed the work. The place is very good. Yeah. And I, I wish you all something. <clears throat> happy that our RDS, just I take this opportunity to express the emotion. When we thought about this uh, platform, uh, this uh, structural geology group in India, it was aimed at igniting young people uh, who are not well exposed to the higher frame. So we should try for that kind of endeavor to take them, you know, uh, you know, into better platform. So I'm happy that people like you are coming up, and thank you very much for accepting our universe, uh, our our invitation. invitation. Mm -hmm. And Sandeep has taken a very nice move for this. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. <coughs> Any more queries? Dhruva is there, I think. Sir, yes, I have just uh, one question. You had made some estimates of temperature from textures and you have made some estimates of tem temperatures from pseudo sections. Firstly, about pseudo sections, I, am, uh, I have the same opinion as expressed by Dr. Nebi Mondo that is it permissible to draw pseudo section for a rock which you yourself say is an open system? <coughs> the metamorphic pathologist can answer this question. And secondly, that the estimates which you made about 250 to 90 or 400 from your texture and the estimates of 600 degree from your pseudo sections 
are they from the same rocks yes sir they are from the same rocks but thing is that i uh, mentioned that the deformation temperature are based on texture i introduce uh, i uh, displayed that is at least 500 degrees celsius that i am saying at least 500 degrees celsius i can uh, uh, obtain this deformation temperature from the microstructure that is at least 500 degrees celsius but when i do the pt zero session modeling then temperature is goes like 600 degrees 650 degrees celsius 150 degree more but i am saying at least 500 degrees uh, is the deformation temperature for that particular rock but i am not saying that is the pressure temperature metamorphic pressure temperature condition i i don't understand your logic okay because if it is the same rock um, <laughs> how can i sir, sir, sir thing is that i am just saying it is at least 500 degrees celsius i am not pinpointing that it is a 500 degrees celsius i am just suggesting it is at least 500 degrees celsius so do you think that the magnetization took place at a temperature of 650 degree uh it's it not like that but but for 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 specifically mention that uh, uh, aspect i have to study more i think okay because and about uh, about this uh, combining different lines of evidence which dr mondol has also referred you should be a little bit more careful okay and and and, and check the assumptions <coughs> that you are making before you apply a particular method okay okay thank you sir any more queries thank you sir so i i i would be grateful if i get many more suggestions then i can improve my results any more queries from young people generally we expect uh, queries from the young people no somebody is saying or no Uh, uh, Purvajyoti. Uh, yes, sir. So, in your in your cross section, you have shown the region region marked in green. What I could see from okay. MCD to the Dirang thrust in the south, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. The total zone you have shown is a shear zone. Not a shear zone. Basically, I mark those those domain based on deformation, not shear zone. These are these are not shear zone. No, you were saying proto myelinite and my, uh, the yeah, central but, part you wrote there proto myelinite. That I didn't understand. But but thing is, sir, I just mentioned this particular unit based on only deformation uh, because uh, in the Himal, this much of a stretch cannot be defined as a shear zone. It is like more than ten to fifteen kilometers. So so I just mentioned for my convenience that it could be the proto myelinite zone. it could be the myelinate zone but based on only deformation intensity now that could be what i mean to say is that your proto myelinate zone deformation can might have occurred for some other uh, events yeah it it is the, the, this proto myelinate zone can be occurred due to the deformation along the mct as well as along the dirang thrust but it is not clear to me anyway uh, please look into that because generally according to the terminology we use this term uh, with respect to the same kinematics yeah any more uh, queries from people give it the am i correct for that professor mondal Uh, Santanu, I could not follow you because your voice got disrupted. No, no, I was. I, I was saying that between yes. the MCT and the Dirang thrust, the entire section, it was marked as mm. uh, proto myelinite in the center, and the other two sides as a myelinite, for example. So my question was: the entire section is a shear zone or no? Okay. I, Did you see his uh, cross section there? No. Yes, yes, I have seen that. Uh, that yellow portion, right? 
green, 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 green push part. green part right. between the mct and dira then huh. what i what i what i feel that this protomannite zone what he said might have been related to other deformation not related to the shearing event what he says about the uh, i mean the protolith something like that right no purvajiti even in a single shear zone you can have a range of variations range of variation. uh, the yeah. orthomalnite protomalnite so let's say if you are looking at a shear zone in granite uh, in the central part you will have you know phyllomalnite even then you have some orthomalnite so this this depends on the degree of shearing you know the amount of clast the porphyroclast versus fine grain matrix that decides the thing so it is very difficult to separate them as two events for that you have to have a different kind of uh, chronological criteria and other criteria to figure out yeah. they could I, be I need to perform thing. different or uh, and is it necessary at all to do that yeah. so sir thing is that uh, as i mentioned that Uh, dirang along the dirang formation dirang thrust this uh, uh, the dirang formation uh, goes up above above, above the, uh, the uh, what bondilla group of rocks uh, and uh, in the along the mct also the it is basically moving the geta himalayan sequence above the lesser himalaya so in that particular deformation pattern in that particular deformation so the base of the dirang formation basically related to the dirang thrust which are intensely deformed and the upper part of the dirang formation which are associated with the mct they are strongly deformed so but i am not just i don't know whether i have to mention is a complete shear zone or not but i can say the deformation intensity is very high near to the uh, uh, thrust zones but not the center central portion of the domain that is from the dirang formation so i just for my convenience i use the term protomyelonite zone and myelonite zone so if if we have uh, if further i work on that particular part domain then i will obviously check how i can share correlate with the uh, other events then only I, then only so can you please can... share your uh, section once again yeah. so that yes. you can clarify your discussion hmm. sure sir this one. so is it visible yes yeah yeah so actually along the dirang for trust this particular whole package is got uh, up to the uh, the uh, bondilla group of rocks okay yeah. so during this deformation during this emplacement to the rocks which are associated uh, adjacent to the dirang trust they are highly intense so this particular domain this particular domain since it is highly intense so i just mark it as a lower myelonate zone and in this particular domain you can see the geta himalayan sequence is uh, getting emplaced over the lesser himalayan sequence and during this deformation the, the rocks associated uh, at the immediate foot wall of the uh, disarm formation disarm formation it, it these are very in, in, are intensely deformed so based on this i use this terminology and but the center portion center portion are not significantly deformed but little bit i show some deformation so that's why i just mark this protomyelonite maybe i am a nomenclature for this uh, unit or uh, maybe wrong but i just use this nomenclature for that case only i understood that i understood that but when you use this term that should be related to the shear zone itself yeah uh, when I, i what i mean to say is that even i think professor uh, mondol will agree if you want to put the protomyelonite zone that should be within the shear zone shear zone okay 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 sir i think no. you should have a uh, more intensive study of the micro textures before you right. look at this term yeah. yes okay to call it a protomyelonite and an ultramyelonite your some of your sections didn't look like an ultramyelonite to me <clears throat> sir so, uh, in my tension i had uh, thin section my petrography i have just used the myelonite word Uh, but just protomyelonite and myelonite this is upper myelonite zone the process of myelinitization is always accompanied by the phenomenon of grain size refinement mm -hmm. you have the matrix and the polar clusters so uh, that texture should uh, your study should clearly bring out 
that there is an increase in the process of grain refinement as you move from the protomyelinite to the ultramyelinite. Okay, sir. So I will de I will do the de uh, detailed study uh, in this particular uh, domain. Then your uh, your uh, how many samples did you analyze for your uh, microstructures? Uh, uh, the uh, mass balance equations. Okay. Sir, actually, <coughs> I took uh, uh, three uh, three samples from the upper myelinite and three samples from the proto myelinite okay. zone, but okay. I have to uh, I have to the average as a one. Mm -hmm. Okay, sir. Uh, one and the for the NCT zone also, I have collected uh, many samples from the leucosome and the uh, my fixed selvage domain and but i have i have took only the average okay so you have any anything to suggest jyoti no it's all, it's, it's okay i think uh, we should uh, take the advice of some metamorphic pathologists before you do this averaging and this such sort of exercises. I hope uh, uh, any any more queries from other people, young people are there. If not, uh, then uh, I think uh, you will be in touch with uh, senior professors from uh, you know uh, metamorphic petrology, and I think the suggestion came from Professor Mukhopadhyay, uh, Professor Abhinav Rai, Professor Nibir Mandal. Will help you yeah, uh, sure. in in undertaking your current work along that area. Uh, with that, uh, I, we must give a, a big round of applause to Purbojati and to end this program. Uh, I would request everyone to unmute your mic and give a, a good round of applause to Purbojati. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, before I before I end. Uh, I would request, uh, uh, sir, uh, we lost one of our uh, uh, person who are very close to uh, structural geology group of Western India. I did for yesterday, I think. Sir, if you, uh, if you say some word and we can keep one minute of silence to pay homage to I, I, Dr. Shubhashish and Gupta. Sir. Yes, uh, Shuhashish uh, did his uh, structural geology work uh, in Rajasthan and his work was one of the very early works on the uh, study of the uh, what is now called the uh, uh, what we called in those days as eight folds. And uh, that uh, the role of uh, a strain in production of such folds, uh, that was uh, a part of it was his work. And uh, afterwards he did a lot of work on geochemistry and tried to do it with the structural geology to uh, arrive at a evolution of the belts. He worked in Shimu extensively in different uh, terrains. He was a, a very good field geologist and uh, also a good petrographer. That is a very rare combination these days. So, um, uh, he died at uh, not, not a very old age. So, it is a great loss for, uh, for us. So, I so, can... We can uh, we can keep one minute silence uh, to pay yes. homage to Dr. Yes. Chandrakuta, please.
Thank you. Thank you very much. So with this, we are coming close to end of this program. We'll be meeting next month again, uh, sometime in the middle of next month. Mm, and in the, in the meantime, I would request everyone again to keep your abstract ready for the next ideas to come in October. Thank you very much for joining with us. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Purvajati, once again. <laughs>